this course is presented to you free of charge by TTJ Tech Services of www.ttjtech.biz and by Stir It Up of www.stirritup.com. And remember, stir is spelled with a U, not an I. So that's S-T-U-R-I-T-U-P dot com. TTJ Tech Services and Stir It Up are pleased to offer this course to you to the glory of God and to the benefit of all those who listen. Today, we are going to be dealing with editing text. Now, I know we already started with editing text. We talked about basic typing, direct touch typing, standard typing, all these different forms of typing. But what if you type and you actually want to have a meaningful way to review what you've typed? What if you make a mistake while you're typing? What if you want to check spelling? And so we're going to begin talking about what I like to call advanced editing today. The ways to actually do some cool things with our text. We would call that rich formatting. And both parts are very important uh, if we want to actually be able to really use these devices for everyday kinds of things that we might be asked to do. Um, the rich text is something where a lot of users, I think, of um, you know devices like let's say a a Hymns U two or a Braille Braille Note or something, you know, it, it wasn't something that was given high priority. I'd say. All right, I've got my iPhone, and I'm going to. Um, I'll I'll use probably the notes app here but you could use the messages app you could use mail pages anything that accepts text and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to type a little bit of something so that we when i start explaining things we have something to work with okay notes public partner now i've gone into the on uh, the notes app I'm in TTJ, search, a search folder TTJ, or a list because in the notes app, you can create multiple notes lists. You can think of a notes list like a folder. And basically, you can get, you'll have a, a default list called notes when you start out. <clears throat> Excuse me. That notes list is synced with iCloud. We talked about iCloud last week. And the notes list, just like your calendars, your contacts, your photos, your music, all these different things, they're synced with iCloud. So in other words, if I create a note on one device, it is available on all of my devices, okay? Automatically unless for some reason I've disabled that feature. So any notes list or notes folder that I create will also sync with iCloud and all the notes in it will sync with iCloud. There is a notes list called on my iPhone, or if you're using an iPad, it would say on my iPad. And that particular notes list is actually just for that device. Now I've disabled that feature. I've gone into settings and notes and I've actually disabled that because I don't want to use a um, folder that would not sync. Um, I could see some purposes for that, that maybe in some applications and some, you know, people's ways of doing things that would make sense. But for me, that's not what I want. So I've disabled that feature. So I don't even run the risk of accidentally putting something there and then <clears throat> have to move it and all that. So, um, you can check that in settings and notes and see if it's enabled or disabled. But um, otherwise, we are going to uh, create a new note. And, and I, I'm, I'll just show you this. 
Uh, this really wasn't, you know, the 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 main part of this, this discussion here, but um, I just missed a Teaching notification here. Bismack, Bismack. Okay, so Two. let me just show you this. Folders, back button. So we can go back to my list of folders. I'm already in a folder. Uh, you can create a new folder as well in that list, and you can even have subfolders. That is like a folder within a folder. Now I'm in the TTJ folder. Share button, folder actions, TTJ heading. And you can share this whole folder uh, so that everybody can work together. That's great for uh, situations where you might have, let's say, uh, a family working together on a note or a uh, team of people, uh, co-workers or students even, or teachers in a classroom setting, all working on the same project. And they uh, they all have notes that they're contributing or what have you, you can you can make a folder that everybody can work together. And then individual notes can also be shared in that same way. We call that collaboratively. Um, we'll spend more time looking at that in the coming sessions, both lecture and lab sessions. Now I'm inside this TTJ folder and what I want to do is just to create a new note. Now this is one of those cases where we have a predictable pattern we can go back and we can look at how is this app laid out and does it conform to one of the, um, the sort of standards that we've already learned. And it actually does conform to several. At its most basic form, this is a list app because you have your list of notes or your list of folders. In this case, I'm inside of a folder, so I have a list of notes. But you'll notice that up in the upper left-hand corner of the screen, I have a back button, just as we would expect. Folders, back button. All right. So now what can I expect on the upper right? Well, I can either expect probably an edit button that allows me to select multiple notes and perform different actions on them. Or perhaps I can expect a new note button on the upper right. If I don't have a new note button on the upper right, that button will be where? On the bottom right, remember we talked about this. Use the pattern information, the fundamentals that you already know. So let's check it out. Let's go to the upper right and see what we do have. Folder actions button. Okay, that's the don't folder actions. The and that's basically going to be like our edit option. They don't call it edit here. Search folder actions button. Double tap to show the notes list action menu. And if you listen to that, the if you go into that by double tapping it, I'm sure there'll be a way to select multiple notes, but there might be other things as well. View as gallery button, the share folder, add folder button, move as folder button, rename button, select notes button. Yep. Sort by default, date edited, group by date, default on button, view attachments button, convert to smart folder button, dismiss context menu button. So absolutely. There was an option to select notes, which is where you would multi-select. In other words, I want to move seven different notes at the same time, you know, contiguous or not. It doesn't matter, but I can select multiple items. So that was definitely there, but it wasn't the only thing. There, We had a lot of other things. You had add folder, meaning you can create a subfolder within that folder. Share folder, which is that collaborative sharing. You had um, the option to convert this to a smart folder, which means that based on how you tag your note, it automatically gets put in here um, or based on other factors, you had options to change the sorting and the grouping. Uh, so, so sorting is how the note appears, where it appears. In other words, it said that it's grouped by date, right? Or it's, it's uh, sorted by date by the most recent note that you've created. So if you want to change that to alphabetical or, or the oldest note first or uh, the note most recently modified, most recently created, there are different options there. I actually think it's the most recently modified the way that it's selected. But then we also have the grouping and that was turned on. It's grouped by date. So it'll show you the notes within the last day, within the last seven days, within the last 30 days. So all of that can be adjusted for this particular folder from within that folder actions menu. So that's why that wasn't called edit. But we used logic and we came up with a logical conclusion and we were pretty much correct. Now we said if we don't see a compose or a new note button or add note or something like that at the upper right, then we must assume based on our fundamentals that it's at the bottom right. So let's go ahead and see if we are correct about that. Touch the bottom right here. 
control bar, new note, button. And indeed, double tap to compose a new note. We are correct. It's at the bottom right. This says toolbar. So let's just swipe to the left and see if there's anything else useful here. 186 notes, one folder. Okay, so that just is the information, uh, the sort of status at the bottom, kind of like the mail app, which has the status at the bottom like that. Uh, it tells us how many notes are in this folder, and it tells us that there's one folder within this folder, meaning there's one subfolder here as well. So our new note button clearly is at the bottom right. And when we double tap that to create a new note, now it's going to get created inside the folder we're currently in. We also know that then we're going to be in something different from a list view. We're going to be in a um, a sort of a writing area, um, and and we will explain what that looks like because we've not really spent much time in in that in great detail. But it's basically going to be an edit field, and you'll have the keyboard on screen, and above the keyboard you will have your uh, quick bar above the letters U, I, and O. Um, you can often also get to the quick bar by touching on the sort of upper left of the keyboard, like the W, the Q, and then continuing to swipe left. That's a, a longer way around, though. Um, I recommend you try to master that sort of above the U, I, and O. And again, what you'll find there is the quick bar that's going to have your predictions, your um, quick type and autocorrect suggestions, or in some cases, maybe autofill suggestions, depending on what you type. And then you also, within the this new note, besides the edit fields, you're going to have a sort of toolbar of additional options for formatting and things of that nature. And I will tell you that at the upper right of the of the screen, there is a done button then to, to complete work on the note, although you can always go back into it later. So let's go ahead and create a new note so we can kind of take a look at this. New note, button, new note, note, text field is editing, character mode, insertion point at start, actions available, use the rotor to access misspelled words. You got a lot of information there. You know that the rotor is currently set to characters because it said character mode. You know that the insertion point, I mean, again, it's like we said last week, it really doesn't matter because there's nothing in this edit field yet. Uh, you know that there are actions available and the rotor is going to default to actions like it typically does. We said that before. So let's swipe up and down with one finger right now and see what the actions are. Add link. Activate default. Add link. So the Activate only additional default. option there is to add a link. You can select some text and you can add a link. Um, we can we will learn about all of that. But this is the edit field. Um, and if we just sort of touch the upper, not really upper, but right kind of the middle of the screen. Note, text field is editing, insertion point at start. Swipe up or down to select a custom action. So we still have that edit field. We can assume the keyboard is on the screen here. Cap Y. Yep, it is. Yankee. And if again, if we kind of go the above the letters U, I, and O. Cap I. Let's go up a little. Camera, button, handwriting, B, e, cap I, B, e, I'm. There's our quick type predictions. I, the, and I'm. That's just what it thinks we might want to type. And up a little higher is the toolbar that I was talking about. Um, handwriting, hide toolbar. You can hide. Don't tap to hide the editing toolbar. So you can hide that while you're typing if you want. You don't have to. You can always show it again later. Tap hide. The cap, hide toolbar, handwriting, button, camera, button, table, button, checklist, off, button, format, button, note, text, October 23rd, done, button, more, button, share, dimmed, button, TTJ, back button. So we have a lot of different options there and a lot of the things that we can do. But again, in order to teach you advanced editing, we need to sort of start typing so that we have something to work with. Now... By default, from your settings, the first line of text that you type in a note becomes the title of that note. That is not always the case in every app, but it is the case in the notes app. So when we start typing, uh, we will find that that is what happens. This note will be called whatever we uh, type as the first line of text. You can always change that, but that's what it's going to be called. So 
um, whatever you change the title, the first line to is what the title will become. So we're just going to call it uh, Test of Cap Advanced T. Editing or Advanced Tango Editing Cap Tech. Tech. Let's call it that. Uh, we'll call it Advanced T. Editing. Advanced. And Cap space editing. Cap at R. Now. Semicolon. Oops, I want a colon in there. Colon. Okay. All right. Now, um, what we have is we have Advanced oh. Editing Test. I can, uh, after the colon, I'm going to put a couple of blank lines. New line, new line. By pressing return twice. Always a good idea to do that. And um, we're just going to type a few extra words here. Uh, a couple of sentences, a couple of lines. Um, the notes app, which this is just a a side point, not the the main point that I'm trying to, you know, make or or teach you today. But just so you're aware of this, the notes app is really really great for basic types of, um, well, notes, <laughs> uh, and and you can even use advanced editing rich formatting to an extent it's not just plain text it used to be many years ago but it's not just plain text you can do you know some advanced stuff there you can do different paragraph styles which indicate like the 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 font size and the uh you know the attributes of the font like whether it's bold or italicized or whatever and of course, as you heard, you can add photos and drawings and sketches and you can add tables to your notes and you can add links and other attachments. And uh, you can really even even um, checklists, which are usable, like you can check items off and so forth and bulleted and numbered lists. And so there's really a lot more to this app than just basic text. But the other side of the coin is that if you want to actually create a professional document, write a letter to somebody or, um, you know, write a report or a, a resume or, you know, anything like that, then this is not the app for you. Then you're going to want to use pages because Apple pages is the word processor and the um, page layout sort of publishing desktop publishing kind of app all in one really. Uh, in many ways. So that is the app that you would use in that scenario. And there's also a third app um, in the sort of uh, trio of apps that allows you to sort of write down ideas and so forth. And that's going to be the Freeform app, which we may take a look at here. We definitely will in the iPad course and we may in the in the voiceover course. But that app is a sort of an empty canvas that allows you to sort of brainstorm ideas and put them down in different formats, including text. Uh, but as you'll learn when we get to that, it's uh, it's sort of different because the text appears in text boxes and so on. So there's a lot more to that, but it's accessible. It's very usable and it's a lot of fun. But if you just want to practice basic typing, the notes app is a great place to do that. Now, when you're making notes, I often recommend making really good use of that return key. Some people call it enter, but on, on um, Apple devices, it is called return, just so you know. And you can hear that Use by tapping on it with voiceover, word. right? We can actually hear that. Return. See, so make a lot of use of that. Put some new lines wherever you want. Uh, and that's going to make it easier to go back and use these as meaningful notes if you can't see what's going on. Um, so if you're in a classroom and you're taking notes, I would recommend, you know, every idea is on a new line. Press return after each idea. That way you can really use your line navigation properly and it, it can even almost become like sentence navigation. Uh, that's not how you'd write a professional document in pages, right? But it is how you would take effective notes. And I use this notes app and we'll do a demo of that during an experience lab. Uh, I use this notes app quite extensively when I go and when I, cause I'm a, a, a preacher, a faith preacher also. And so I go to our church or other churches as God leads. And I do, you know, some different sermons and messages. And when I do that, I copy the Bible scriptures and sometimes some other notes uh, about things that I want to say. And I put them on individual lines so that when I'm going back, cause that's a question that I get a lot. Uh, this is a bit of a rabbit trail today. It's kind of more for when, uh, more for a Wednesday lab, uh, but I, I still want to share it with you. Um, I get that question a lot about 
well, I'm going to, it's not always, you know, people that are preaching. Sometimes it is, but sometimes it's, you know, I have to, I have to speak in front of a crowd on this particular subject or that particular subject. And I have to do a presentation and I, I want to have my notes in front of me, but I'm just not sure how I'm going to be able to navigate. But what I do, and I find it to be very, very effective is I um, use one AirPod. I don't use both because that way I can have one ear out to focus on other things, but I put one AirPod in and then um, that means that the rest of the people in the congregation or audience or whatever doesn't have to hear voiceover, right? Because I've got that AirPod in. But if you don't use Apple AirPods, you could use any kind of earbuds or headphones that you may have. Uh, whatever you like. And then uh, what I do is I use the notes app. And I, as I said, I just make sure that each concept, each idea, and sometimes even each sentence is on its own new separate line. And then I just use line navigation when I'm, you know, standing there and I'm, I'm speaking and it really gives me an idea and I can write as little or as much as I feel like I need to write. So that is your choice. And, and that's something you'll become more comfortable with as you do it, I think, but that's personal preference, right? But so this notes app is really, really powerful and really useful for these kinds of scenarios, but we have to learn how to work with our text first. So we make sure that what we type is, is right and, and meaningful. So I'm going to type a few lines of text now. Um, new, new line. I'm on my blank line there and I'm just going to start typing and we'll say a few words here and then I'll be back. Let's put a period, period new line. New line. Cloud dumps X E R U space A apps T R G space day. Rude. Exclamation mark. Okay. I wanted a question mark there, but other than that, we're good. So um let me go back and fix that. Uh question question mark. All right, let's put another new line. New line. All right. This space A test period test. And uh, what we're going to find is that I'm, I'll, oops, I accidentally, hold on, sorry about that, guys. Okay, let me fix that. I, I, had, I accidentally pressed a K there, and I didn't mean to when I was trying to edit something. Uh, I think we're good now. All right. Yeah, that's good. This is a test. All right, that's enough for now. So let's read what I've typed by simply tapping on the edit field, kind of the center of the screen. Note, this is a test. Now, where I typed, it didn't read the whole thing because I happened to land kind of partway through that note. So if that happens and you suspect it's not the whole thing, just swipe to the left and then back to the right. Um, October 23rd. Now to the right. Note, text field is editing. Advanced editing test. Hello there, everybody. How are you all doing today? This is a test. Character mode. Insertion point between period and new line at the 92nd position. Actions available. Use the rotor to access misspelled words. Now you'll remember that we can move quickly to the beginning and to the end of an edit field by simply double tapping in that edit field. It's basically like a you might think of it as a toggle, but it's going to one time. Insertion point at start. Again. Insertion point at end. Again. Insertion point at start. So we're just jumping back and forth between the beginning and the end. To edit or review our text in a more specific way, because we did just review our text, right? We listened to it. Everything sounded good. But we want to check a little more in depth, maybe. And you know what I should do? I should um, I should maybe, like, make a mistake here. Let's go to the end of this edit field. Insertion point at end. Add link. Activate. Characters. New, new line. All right, I'm on a new line. Um, let me think of some other things to say real quick so I can make some mistakes deliberately and see if we can identify them when we're reading back. Cause that's also sort of an important skill is to know when you really need to be concerned about something. Um, okay. Let's just type a few things here, uh, with some mistakes. Okay. Now some of it may auto correct and not be a mistake, but let's see. So I did that, that, yeah, that ended up auto correcting. Um, let's try something here. Let's see, really get a mistake in there. Okay. S space is G. Uh, G two space. Now that one. 
<laughs> it auto corrected to a different word. Uh, so let me let me just uh, keep let me just keep typing a little bit here. Um, all right. Uh, all right. Let's see what I got here. Uh, yeah, that's gonna really auto correct. So that's the idea. I'm, I'm deliberately trying to make some mistakes here. And and uh, let's see. Uh, we're out here. Okay. Hopefully that. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Period. I don't really get many auto. Let's see. Uh, I'm just still typing here, guys. Um, another sentence or two yet, so you can get the the meaning of this uh, a little bit more. I'm not worrying about what I'm typing. We're gonna see if we can get some uh mistakes in here all right and i typed uh that auto corrected wow okay so i typed that famous sentence that has every single letter of the alphabet in it the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog let's read this whole thing now note text field is editing advanced editing test hello there everybody how are you all doing today this is a test I think those is going to be good. The quick brown fix jumps over the lazy dog. Okay, so two of them, two of them are mistakes. One was because um, it auto corrected. I tried to make a mistake and it auto corrected to something different than what I intended. And the other one is I, I made a mistake and it is a, a recognizable word, so it didn't auto correct because uh, it didn't know enough about the context. So we have I think those is going to be. Um, good and obviously i meant this and we have fix instead of fox so when you're listening back the, the whole point of doing that that way was to say to you that when you just listen to your overall edit uh field be paying attention and you'll automatically pick up on some things without even doing an in-depth review uh you as soon as you listen you know that something is wrong the way it's pronounced the way that the spacing is like if let's say I accidentally somehow got a period in here where I shouldn't have it. Characters let's add that in. Lazy over. Um. Period. All right. A let's listen to the sentence again. Note: Text field is edited. Tell me if you can pick up on this, right? Okay. Hello there, everybody. How are you all doing today? This is a test. I think those is going to be good. There's one mistake. The quick brown fix jumps over the lazy dog. Now, see how there was a big pause after jumps over the or the, and then you had a big pause there. So that's another indication. There's something I need to check there. There's probably a punctuation in there or something. So we've heard three things by just doing a tap on the edit field or a swipe back and forth to get to the edit field. We, we've heard that we need to do some reviewing here now more in depth. It's not that I necessarily need to read this whole edit field word for word because I can easily uh, I can easily find these mistakes now. Now, before I do anything else, we want to do one other check, and that is to see if there are anything that voiceover identifies, or that uh, Apple, excuse me, iOS identifies as a misspelled word. When you are cited and you're looking at an edit field all of your misspellings or what it thinks are misspellings will be red underlined okay and they're underlined in red voiceover will say misspelled word usually and so as you're reviewing you may encounter them but voiceover also has a, a sort of a global spell check feature um which really cited folks don't use or need anymore because they see the red underline and they, you know, your eyes get immediately drawn to that. And you just fix it. And, and um, to fix it, you, there's a few different ways you can do that. And I will teach you that. Um, but I do want to show you the global spell check for voiceover that kind of harkens back to the days of, you know, word perfect where we did control F2 or whatever. Right. So we could get every misspelled word and, and there's, uh, benefits to that for somebody who cannot see because you don't have to wait until you encounter the word and so forth and so misspelled words automatically is in the rotor when it's needed and if you are in your edit field Note. we turn the rotor misspelled words 
swipe left or right to choose a replacement, then double tap to insert. And it just explained to you how we're going to use that. So we're going to swipe up and down with one finger, just like usual when we work with the rotor. And that up and down swipe is going to move us to the next or to the previous misspelling. And then when we find a misspelling, we're going to swipe to the left or to the right to choose a replacement and double tap to select it and insert that replacement. If in fact there are no replacements that we want, we know that the misspelled word is still highlighted. So we can just type a new spelling and have another go at it. I don't think we're going to find any misspellings in this because I don't think that I misspelled anything. Those selected. Okay, it seems to... This. Maybe the way those is spelled wasn't quite like the word those because it, it actually has selected that for some reason. Left and right swipe. Those, thus, this. And actually what we wanted... Uh, was this. So we'll double tap on that. This unselected. All right. Praise God. That worked out quite well. You got to see that now. There's definitely see that no misspellings when I swipe up and down. Nothing. All right. So we've done a, a, a sort of preliminary check. Now we've listened to the whole thing. We found three errors before we began to do a more in-depth review. We did a, a, a spell check essentially. And that actually took care of one of the errors for us. I didn't look at how that word those was spelled, but apparently it wasn't correct anyway. So what we did now is we fixed it. All right. So now we would assume that we only have two errors left to fix, but we're going to turn the rotor away from misspellings here. Actions, act characters. And we're going to just tap on the edit field again and swipe and, and read the whole thing automatically again. Note, text field is editing. Advanced editing test. Hello there, everybody. How are you all doing today? This is a test. I think this is going to be good. That one's fixed. The quick brown fix jumps over the lazy dog. Okay, so how would I how would I now proceed with the next thing that I want to do? And this is where we're going to have to learn some things now about the editing. When you move the voiceover cursor, you remember what that is, okay? In an edit field, you're also going to be moving the insertion point. The insertion point, some people might call it the, the, the system carrot, but it's it's called the insertion point. And that's what you are moving when you do this double tap and you hear voiceover say, insertion point at start. Okay. Now, it's a little different. If you're a, you know, a JAWS user or whatever, it's a little different on Apple devices than what you're used to. Every time you swipe up or down with one finger when the rotor is set to, say, characters or words, for example, you're moving the insertion point, either to the next or to the previous character, word, line, whatever you're set for. But the relationship between where that insertion point is and the letter that VoiceOver announces can be confusing to somebody who's never used an Apple device before because they do it a little bit differently. And so I want to step away from technology for a second and give you a sort of uh, fun little analogy that you can picture. And that way um, you'll start to get this idea in your head. So let's suppose we, we go out to lunch and we are sitting at a uh, counter. So it's one of those restaurants where you've got like a shared um, common dining experience right so you're sitting right next to other people i don't know if you all have ever been to any of those they're not all that uh typical you know most restaurants you got your booth your table whatever but every now and then you'll find a restaurant we've got a hibachi restaurant near us that does this where you 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 know you've got a big giant table and your party might just be part of that and then there's other people sitting at the same table with you in a sort of a shared experience okay so we're all sitting at a very long counter or some people might think about a bar or something like that, but it's it's this very long, uh, you know, counter experience, and all of us are sitting in a row. And so today, there is, uh, there's Cliff, and then to Cliff's right we have uh, Trainer Sarah, and then to the right of Sarah is Trainer Lynn. So uh, Sarah is in the middle. She's either a rose between two thorns or a thorn between two roses, however you want to look at it. And I'm walking back and forth. I'm not sitting. I'm standing behind them and I'm walking sort of in between them. 
All right. So if I start out on the left of this counter, I'm going to be at the far left and Cliff is going to be to my right because remember he's the first person going left to right and there's nobody to my left but Cliff is to my right and so I walk up there and I'm just to the left of Cliff he's just to my right and he's going to say his name Cliff now I'm going to walk and I'm going to walk now to the right one position now what I have now is I now have Cliff on my left and I have Sarah on my right I'm right in between them OK, and so I have passed by Cliff now. OK, I walked one position to the right, so I had to pass by Cliff. I walked right behind him. I could reach out and I could touch his shoulders. His food that he's eating, his drink is right in front of him on the table. And uh, now I'm to his right. And that means that he is to my left. Sarah is to my right. Now, if I walk back to the left one position, guess what? I'm going to pass by Cliff again, and he's going to say his name again. So I've passed Cliff both directions now. All right, now let's go back to the right one position. Now I passed Cliff yet a third time, and I got Sarah on the right, Cliff on the left. I'm going to walk to the right another position. Now I pass by Sarah. Now Sarah is to my left, and Lynn is to my right, okay? And if I walk back to the left one position, I pass by Sarah again. Now Sarah is to my right and Cliff is to my left. I walk to the right one position. I pass by Sarah again. Each time I have to pass by the same person. And now I'm in between Sarah and Lynn again. Sarah on the left and Lynn on the right. And if I walk one more to the right, I pass by Lynn for the first time now. And now Lynn is to my left and nothing is to my right. There's an empty seat there waiting for me so I can eat my food and drink my drink. But if I walk back to the left, I pass by Lynn a second time. You pass by the same person going in both directions, okay? So you get that in your mind for a second. And we're going to now take that concept and we're going to transfer that to the way that the insertion point and voiceover work together to tell you what you are hearing. Each time you swipe up or down with one finger with that rotor set to characters or words or lines, you are going to hear the announcement of the character that you are passing by. That's why I put so much emphasis on that I pass by the same person going in both directions. This is what is different than um, what you hear on a Windows device. And it is, if you don't understand how to deal with this, it can be very confusing at first because you think, why am I hearing the same letter when I go both directions? Well, because when you swipe down, you're moving to the right. Um, you're hearing the character that you're passing by and now your voiceover cursor is directly after that character that was spoken. It's directly to the right of that character that was spoken. But if you swipe back up now, you're moving to the left. You're passing by the same character, but now you're hearing the character that you pass by. Your, your voiceover, your insertion point is now just before, just in front of that character that was spoken. So as you go in either direction, in both cases, you're hearing the the um, the letter or the word or what have you. We'll just stick with characters right now to make it easy and consistent. You're hearing the character in both directions. You're hearing the character that you pass by. The difference is that when you swipe down, your insertion point is directly after the character that was spoken. And when you swipe back up, your insertion point is directly before or to the left of the character that was just spoken. And the same thing applies to words. The same thing applies to lines. So you could be at the end of a line when you swipe down, but you just heard the line. You swipe back up, you hear the same line because you just passed over it. But now you're at the beginning of that line, just in front of it. So let's demo this. My insertion point is at the beginning, if I recall. Return. Cap, cap, hey. I'm already set to characters. So I'm going to start swiping down. We call this um advanced editing test so the first word here is going to be and the word advanced but i'm going to swipe down just a few times one finger cap a alpha d v a n okay november where is the insertion point you just heard the letter n of advanced the insertion point is just to the right of the letter n it's between the 
N and the C in the word advanced. And I think if I do a three finger single tap, I might get voiceover to tell me that. Bottom of screen, notes. Bottom okay, I guess not. Um, I can get voiceover to tell me that probably if Dictate. I, how do I want to do that? Note, the quick brown Just read the whole thing, maybe. Lazy dog. I guess I have to read the whole, note. the whole Tech note is to get voiceover to tell me, has, but I just want to prove it. It's between the N and the C. Today? This is a test. I think this is going to be good. The quick brown fix jumps over the lazy dog. Character mode, insertion point between N and C at the sixth position. Yep, there you go. Okay. So I won't do that every time. I just wanted to prove it to you. But now, so the insertion point is between the N and the C. And the last letter we heard when we swiped down was the letter N. Now, if we want to go back up or back, to, you know, to the left, I mean, you're swiping up with one finger, but that moves you to the previous character. So it's moving you to the left. You are now going to hear the same letter because you're passing over that same letter you're passing over the letter n again but this time the insertion point is not going to be between n and c it's going to be between a and n hopefully we all know how to spell advanced right it's going to be between a and n instead of n and c so let's swipe up we expect to still hear the letter n Add link. Oops, I'm sorry. Hold on, I gotta turn words. Characters. Turn back to characters. I had. Oh, there we go. Now we swipe up one, and what we're gonna hear is the same letter. N. November. It said N. If we swipe down. N. N again. November. We're after the letter N though. Swipe up. N. November. We're before the letter N. And I said I wasn't gonna do this every time, but I'm gonna do it one more time just so that you can also hear voiceover tell you. Now it's going to say insertion point between A and N instead of N and C. The quick brown fix jumps over the lazy dog. Character mode, insertion point between A and N at the fifth position. See that? So the insertion point is now between the A and the N instead of the N and the C. Let's do a little more of this just so we can really drill this in. Because this is one of those things you just have to practice, and you're going to have to practice it on your own. But I'll do a few more examples just to just to help. So let's swipe down a few more times here. Add, add, add link. Oops. Characters. Okay. Tango. We're just to the right of the letter T. If I swipe up with one finger, T. I go back. Tango. I still hear T. I swipe down. T. See. Tango. I go back up and back down, back and forth every time. T, 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 T. Right? Same letter. Tango. Okay. The difference is whether the insertion point is in front of it or behind it, or in other words, before it or after it. So when I swipe up, the insertion point T. is before it. Tango. So the word is edit, ed editing. And so E D I T. So that means the insertion points between the I and the T. If I swipe down, T. Tango. Well, there's also an I after it. So this time it's between the T and the I, just the opposite direction. That's that a funny uh, two different I's there, right? You have E-D-I-T-I-N-G. All right. So that was a, a bit of a funny one to, to demonstrate that with. But if we swipe down, we'll see. I, and I'm after India. it. I'm after the I. N. N. November. And now. G. Golf. I'm after the G. So we're going to use this knowledge to add a few letters to the word test. Let's swipe down some more. Space. Cap T. Actually, Tango. let's even do a demo before that. Uh, let's go back up. Cap T. Okay. Tango. I swiped back up, so I'm just to the left of the letter T now, just after the space. And we're going to put the word good in here. So advanced editing, good test. It's the title. Hyphen. So we will... We'll tap on shift to bring it to caps and we'll type the letter cap G, cap G. and then o -O -D. space. We need a space now. Space. Good. Now let's swipe down with one finger. Add link. I got to turn the rotor. Characters. Swipe down with one finger. Cap T. E. Back up. E. Cap T. Space. D. O. O. Cap G. Space. G. Yeah, everything looks good. If I listen to that, the, quick art note the whole thing. Is editing. Advanced editing. Good test. Okay, the characters. now let's go back and, and do another demo of that. 
let's we want to make the word testing instead of test. So T E S T I N G. So swipe down. Good test space cap G O O D space cap T E S T. Okay, so that's where I want to add my I N G because I'm swiping down, so I know that I'm right after the letter that it spoke. So I'm now after the T. If I make a mistake and I'm not paying attention or I don't understand this concept and I swipe up, T. oh, I hear the letter T. T. I guess I'm right after the T. I guess I'll type now I-N-G. I-N-G. And you're going to find we have a problem. Let's read what that word sounds like by turning the rotor to words. Words. And testing misspelled. Testing colon. Testing colon misspelled. And it even says misspelled because what I did is I swiped up and I put, even though it said T, the cursor was to the left of the T. And so now what I have is I have the the whole thing in, incorrect. Let's look at it letter by letter. Characters, cap T, E, S, I, N, G, T. Yep. Now, Tango. let's uh, let's see if misspelled words will... No, I'm not even going to do I'm not going to use misspelled words because I want to teach you how to manually fix this. All right. So... We know that we made a mistake, and I made that mistake on purpose. Where we should have put it was when we were to the right of it, and it spoke it, not to the left of it. So what's going to be the easiest way to fix this? There are a few different options. You could certainly just delete the ING and then go to the right of the T and add the ING again. There's a bunch of different ways that you can do this, but I'm trying to think of the most efficient way to fix it. And really the easiest and most efficient way to fix it is going to be to add another T. We have T-E-S-I-N-G-T. -E so the easiest thing would be to add another T after the S and then just delete the T at the end. That's going to be your easiest option. So let's start out by deleting the T at the end. Now, when you delete it, it's, the, it's going to delete the previous character. So I need to have my cursor to the right of that last t because it's spelled right now t-e-s-i-n-g-t -E so let's use characters t t colon colon t t okay i'm right after it i was swiping up and down i'm right after it so i'll just press delete t okay it deleted it now we should see a g and then a colon t g colon okay now we're going to position the cursor to the left of the i so i'm going to swipe up Call g and i and i'm going to just t -T. type t -T. another t and now we look at this with words testing colon. and it's correct. Testing. That's how easy that was. And everything I'm teaching you here about characters applies to words as well. So I'm in word mode now. I've got the rotor set to words. If I swipe up, it's going to read testing. testing colon. But where is my my insertion point? It's just to the left of the letter T in testing of the beginning of the word. If I turn the rotor to characters, you can see that. Characters. If I swipe down, I'll hear that T. Cap T. Right? I just passed it Tango. now. Now I'm to the right of it, but I swipe back up. Cap T. I'm just to the left of it. Tango. Right at the beginning of the word. If we go back to, to words again, words. and we swipe down, testing colon. we hear the same word, but now we're just after the, the word testing. If I set the rotor to characters, you can see characters. when I swipe up, it's just it, now it's to the left of the colon between the G and the colon. And I swipe down colon. again. It's right after the word with the colon and it's the word testing. So every time I use and the same thing applies to line navigation as well. Three, I don't even need to demo it for you because the whole idea is that if I um, if I wanted to uh, swipe up, it's going to read a line and it's going to put the insertion point just at the beginning of that line to the left of the first character in the line and if i swipe down it's going to read to the end of the it's going to read the same line but it's going to put me just after the last letter or last character in that line just at the end of the line so that is how you navigate and really and truly the most important thing you can do is practice this now i'm going to finish fixing my mistakes here because remember we still have two mistakes i think to fix i don't think i fixed either one of them yet fix instead of fox and we put a period where there shouldn't be one so we need to, to fix that so let's pretend that i forgot what i had to fix and let's listen to it again so that we can Not note text field is editing advanced editing good testing hello there everybody how are you all doing today this is a test i think this is going to be good the quick brown fix jumps over the lazy dog Character and speaking of dog, I'm sorry, my 
puppies barking there for a second. Either my, either my, uh, my son is home or, um, there's somebody outside the neighbor walking a, a dog or something. So she will either way, she'll calm down in a minute, but we heard those two errors. We heard that six instead of Fox. And we heard that there's a gap in there, which we assume is some sort of punctuation. Uh, we actually know, but you know, so now here's the thing. Both of those errors happen to be in the last sentence in the note. And so rather than navigating by character or by word or by line, even what I'm going to do is I want to quickly jump to the end of the note and then work backwards because that's going to be quicker. So I'll go to the edit field. You got to make sure that the focus is not on the on-screen keyboard, but that it's on the edit field itself. So touch sort of the middle here. Talk note, text field is editing. I then swipe back and forth and we'll double tap until we hear that it's at the end. Insertion point at start. Insertion point at end. Okay, now I will use word navigation because that's going to seem to be the most effective for where I'm at. Characters, words. And we'll swipe up. Dog period, lazy, the period. And there we already found that there's a mistake. It says the period. So how are we going to fix this? Well, let's swipe down to get to the end of it. The period. Now let's turn the rotor to characters to be sure. Characters. We're probably already at the correct place, but I'm going to swipe up once. Period. Yep, now I'm before it, so I don't want to delete now or I'll delete the E. Let's swipe down. Period. Now we can delete. Period. Okay. And now if we look by character. Turn E, E, space L, A, Z. Yep, it's perfect. So the other problem is fix. So let's turn the rotor to words again. Words, less, E, over, jumps, fix. There it is. Turn to characters. Characters, F, I. There's the letter I want to delete. So we'll just press delete. I'm after it already. I. And type an O. Oh. And now we'll look at it. Or Fox. Okay. I also could have gone to the beginning of that line and then gone down by word. I could have done it either way. Uh, but let's listen to the whole thing now. Our note, text field is editing. Advanced editing, good testing. Hello there, everybody. How are you all doing today? This is a test. I think this is going to be good. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Word mode, insertion point. And if there's anything else that I want to check, I can do it in that same way. You know, if I, 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 if I just want to double check something, um, let me, you know, I want to make sure there's a question mark where it says, how are you all doing today? Uh, so I can, uh, maybe the easiest way is to set the rotor to lines. Characters, words, lines. Swipe up. The quick breath, I think this is a test. How are you all doing today? Let's go to words. Words. Swipe down. How are you all doing today? Question mark. Yep, and it already tells me that there's a question mark there. If I need to be more granular, I can go to characters even if I want to. Now at the upper right here. October to done. Button. Done. TTJ. Back button. And we've just completed that. So we just showed you. Really, in less than an hour's time, we showed you uh, what it is like to do editing with the voiceover cursor. And we also talked a little about the Notes app, but not a lot about the Notes app, but we gave you enough to, to get started. And really, that was just to sort of help you to understand what we're doing. But we really taught you editing with the voiceover cursor. We talked about misspellings, how to fix spelling errors that you hear. Uh, we talked about how to move and, and move the, uh, the insertion point and what voiceover is going to say. And then we talked about, you know, what to do in each of those scenarios. Now, there's one more thing I want to talk about before we go to the other instructors and then get your questions. And that is to talk about what happens if we want to select some text, especially multiple words uh, of text, uh, contiguous text, because Sometimes you have to fix a, a block of text, right? Not just one letter or one word here or there. And this is where we highly recommend that our voiceover users put text selection in the rotor. That may not be in there by default. That's one that you can add if you go into settings and, you know, your um, accessibility and then voiceover and then go to rotor and go to rotor items. And if text selection is not selected, you can you can turn it on by selecting it and add it to the rotor. The point of this is that it's going to make it easier to select text. There is a way to do it without having 
text selection in the rotor. And that is by using a, um, a two finger pinch and spread. And that's what our sighted family and friends do. They, they put two fingers on the screen and they, uh, spread them apart or pinch them together to either increase or decrease respectively what is selected. And we can do that also, but it is not quite as precise for us who cannot see uh, where spatial awareness might be a bit tricky also. So the text selection rotor option is so much easier for us. And I highly recommend it if you're a voiceover user. So we're going to assume that you have or that you plan to put text selection in the rotor. And what we're going to see is that that's another rotor item here. It's called text selection. Again, it, everything always starts with the up and down swipe when it comes to the rotor, right? One finger swipe up and down. When your rotor is set to text selection, when you swipe up or down, you're changing what is selected, either character, words, lines, what have you. And once you pick the one you want, you're going to swipe to the right to increase what is selected or swipe to the left to decrease what you've already selected. And it is by whatever you set, words, characters, lines, what, ha what have you. So uh, let me just demo that because I think that's going to be um, the, the best way to do it. So we have the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. And that's a cool sentence because it contains every single letter of the American alphabet. But let's go ahead and change that to say the quick brown fox does something else. We'll just come up with something and so i want to select jumps over the lazy dog so let's get back to business here three thirty four my phone has since locked which is fine gone to sleep that's okay note note advanced editing good testing hello we need to double tap to get back into edit mode here note, advanced editing good note text field is editing advanced editing good testing hello there everybody insertion point at end and i double tapped again to make sure the insertion points at the end because that's probably going to be the easiest so the first thing you want to do is position your insertion point just before whatever it is that you want to select and we should be pretty good at that by now so let's go to words characters words and swipe up dog period lazy e over jumps remember we want to change jumps over the lazy dog so now we're right in front of the letter J, just where we want to be. If we want to confirm that, we can go to characters. Characters. Swipe down. J. Yep. Juliet. Got to swipe back up now. J. Okay. Juliet. All right. Now we're just to the left of the letter J, just before it. Let's turn the rotor until we hear text selection. Words. Lines. Text selection. Swipe right to expand selection. Swipe left to shrink selection. All right. Let's swipe up or down until we hear words. Page selection, line selection, word selection. Okay, there it is. You also have character selection. Right. Select all character word selection. All right, we're in word selection. I'm going to swipe to the right now to increase what's selected. Nothing selected right now, but. Jumps selected over the lazy dog selected. Now, here's another one of those cases where I'm thinking a three finger single tap might tell me what's selected, but it may not. Selected text jumps over the lazy dog okay good body system font regular seven now i'm going to uh i'm going to type something else we'll say the quick brown fox ate a banana so let's just type a a selection deleted now it deleted everything that was selected now right and it's replacing it with what i'm typing a, space so H, we uh D, have G, to C, put double, a eight, eight, a, eight a, 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 a. and we'll put a period i Place think i have to put period, the period banana let's see Yep. Okay. So now text make sure, lines. make sure that your rotor is no longer set to text selection. Uh, change the rotor setting to something else. Words. Okay. Characters. Peer. A. A. Peer. New line. All right. Let's read the whole thing now uh, by going to lines. Words. Lines. The quick brown fox ate a banana. Okay. And there you go. So that's how easy it is to select some text. And then once it's selected, there's all sorts of things you can do. When you uh, want to, you can just delete and it'll delete everything that's selected. You can start typing and it will replace what's selected. There's also a uh, typically in in, uh, you know, word processing page layout and, and even editing apps like notes. Uh, there's typically going to be an edit rotor um, as well. So uh, when you have some text selected, let me just show you that again. Let's select a, a banana words. Care, cap, T, cap, T. Okay, hold on. Brad Fox. All right, now. 
Tap space. I went down to the just to the left of the A and eight. Select the uh, text selection. Words, lines, text selection. We should still be on words. Right, right, I'll right, double right, check, right. but we should be. Word selection. Yeah, so let's select it. Uh, eight, A, banana, selected. Now, I'm going to turn the rotor away from text selection so we can properly move around here. But lines. I'm going to caution you when the rotor is not set to text selection, do not swipe up and down. Because if you do, and it's set to like line navigation or character or word navigation, you're going to deselect what you have selected, and you'll have to go back and do it again. It's not going to delete it, but it, it's going to and, – and and don't type any letters, or that will delete what you've selected and replace it with something else. But in order to be able to move left and right on the screen with one finger, I have to turn the rotor away from text selection now. So I want to see, now that I have some text selected, if there's any additional choices in the toolbar – I, a camera, handwriting, high toolbar, Q, hot pad, camera, table, button. Sometimes there is have to add a, table uh, to a little pop-up menu that sort of automatically appears. Um, we don't seem to have that, but let's uh, turn the rotor because we will find. Misspelled words. Edit. We will find the edit rotor option and look what it has in it now. Cut, paste, look up, share. Undo. Make checklist item. Set bold. Set italic. Set underline. Set strike through. Increase indentation. Decrease indentation. Copy. Cut. Lots of choices there, all based upon what we've selected. And there might be an actions. Misspelled words. Characters. There's no actions right now. Okay, so you you have you have a a ton of choices available here in edit, and if we were to um, want to choose one? We simply double tap on it when we when we're in the when we turn the rotor to edit and we swipe up and down with one uh, finger and we hear things like copy or uh, paste or uh, make bold or whatever set bold. You just double tap with one finger then to choose that option. Now again, if I don't want this, if I accidentally selected it. I can just set the rotor to characters or words, words and swipe up or down with one finger. 8A, unselected. And it now deselected it. I I would Benalti. caution you again about that. Make sure you don't accidentally do that when you don't mean to. And make sure you don't accidentally type something when you don't mean to. Now, um, when, you, uh, when you're in the notes app. Lines or banana period. Like there's the word character baby here's the word banana and if you words banana period i don't really know that i can do this because the camera the table check format note our note the way the voiceover cursor is you can't be on a, a keyboard but i think when i when i'm in front of a word like that i think i can like long press on it but i might have to select it first let me just try that i haven't done that in a while Paste menu item. Okay, yeah, it did. It did actually bring up a context menu there based on where I'm at. So I have paste. Select menu item. Select all menu item. Autofill menu. Add link menu item. Format menu item. Format. And button. you can see that there's. Return. Now we'll just banana period. We'll just move away from that. You can see that there's different additional choices there that we didn't have otherwise, like add link and so on. So you, you again, that was just a long press. Remember the long press gesture. And so uh, you, the thing about doing long press in something like an edit field is you absolutely have to make sure that the focus of the voiceover cursor is not on the keyboard, because if it's on a letter, it will type that letter, right? Or even a double letter, depending on your typing mode. And so you have to first touch the edit field itself if you're going to do a, a long press within the edit field. So first position your voiceover cursor, and then once you've positioned it, touch the edit field with one finger and make sure it's just the edit field that you're touching and not the keyboard. I would also remind you, speaking of that, that even the rotor options are different depending on whether focus is on the keyboard itself or on the edit field itself, right? So it's... Um, it's easy to get sort of out of sync there if you're not careful. 
And I've had people say to me, well, how come when I did a magic tap to try to start dictation, it played music instead of, you know, starting dictation? Well, it's because inadvertently you didn't have focus in a place that voiceover recognized as something that accepts text, even though you were technically in it, the voiceover cursor was moved to somewhere else. And that's why that happens. So uh, just be very, very aware of and practice with, you know, finding out where and making sure you know how to control where your uh, voiceover cursor actually is and what has the focus at this time. And I think it's a, I think it's a very, very important skill. Look, I, I like, you know, I have, I don't use the Bluetooth keyboard with my iPhone. I do have smart keyboards with both of my iPads. My 10th generation iPad has the, um, oh, what does Apple even call that one? Uh, the magic keyboard folio for 10th generation iPad, I think, or something like that. And then I have the magic keyboard for the iPad Pro as well. I have nothing against using keyboards. And later on in this course, we're going to teach you how to use that trainer. Sarah has a keyboard with her iPad trainer. Cliff, we call him the keyboard king because he does have them for his iPhone as well. And for, you know, he's got keyboards in every room of the house practically and one in the car. Uh, nothing wrong. with. There's not one keyboards. in the kitchen. Oh, well, all right. There's oh! not one in the kitchen. I stand corrected. <laughs> You're but, slacking. <laughs> but, but so we're all, we're all fans of keyboards. Okay. But we also all agree. Number one, you've got to learn on screen first. If you're ever really going to be a proficient iOS user and voiceover user. Number two, it is not always practical. I know some of them fold and all that, but you, you're, you know, you're standing in the middle of Walmart and you need to do a real quick search. Does Walmart have this in the store? Or, you know, you're standing somewhere or sitting somewhere out in public at the restaurant, at the airport. You don't want to have to pull out that Bluetooth keyboard, however small it may be, every time you need to type and something. In a sense, they, you know, these, I, I don't, I'm, I don't want to say generation, but this cluster of users, I guess, for lack of a better term, are spoiled or blessed or privileged, however you want to put it. Because when we started using the iPhone Matt back in 2009, 10, 11, and 12, Bluetooth wasn't even an option. Yeah, they, yeah. you didn't have Bluetooth <laughs> keyboard support at first. That We can't stress that enough. That's true with, with um, text selection, and it's true with misspelled words, because you'll try to simply swipe left and right, like to move normal navigation, and you, it won't work, because mm -hmm. that particular rotor option has right and left swipe assignments to it and so it's not going to do the right thing or the thing that you're expecting it to do i should say uh when it's in that position so yeah make sure you turn it away from there and sometimes you even like with text selection as i did a few minutes ago sometimes you even have to turn it away once the text is selected in order to be able to do the thing that you want to do with the selected text but again oh. just be very careful then that you don't accidentally swipe up or down or or type a letter so in terms of creating folders in uh, the notes app. Uh, so you have to go through your iCloud or does it have to be through Gmail? And how do you uh, create folders again? Well, when you are uh, the, the any folder that you're in or if you're just in the main, um, the notes app itself, not in any folders, there's just gonna be an add folder or new folder button. New yeah, it's at the bottom of the top. screen, uh, but it's actually mm -hmm. to the left of the new note button, because even when you're not in a folder, you can create a new note, which will just go in whatever your default folder is. But to the left of that, there's a new folder button. And then if you're inside a folder, you can even create a folder within it. Um, as far mm -hmm. as where it has to be, that's a question that is probably very confusing to some of our not advanced users, but I'll still answer it for those who are more advanced. Um, any account that supports notes can I'm be not. used. Uh, I recommend iCloud because that's where you're going to get the best experience. And in fact, I've disabled notes for Gmail and everything else, even though I have those <laughs> accounts on my device, I don't use them for that purpose. So I've turned off notes under my Gmail settings and, you know, account settings and so on. So 
we recommend iCloud, but any any account technically that supports notes uh, will do it. You just have to be very aware of where things are going then because right. if you have something on on one device that's not on another one, then you'll mm-hmm. suddenly say, well, my notes aren't there you know, or they're not syncing. And mm-hmm. it's because you're using an account that isn't you know, the same on both devices or something. All right. And then once uh, I hit done, could I attach a note or is that only in pages? Because I know it goes directly into the body of an email when you're emailing it to someone. Can you, you mean attach a note to another note or? Attach a note to the email uh, as an email attachment. Oh, oh, well, when you share a note by email, you're correct. It, It goes directly to the body. If you want to... If you want to um, attach it specifically, you'd have to save it instead of using the email option under notes. You'd have to use like save to files and it'll save as a, a TXT or or certain things like a scan document might save as a PDF or something. Um, but or, or or bring it into pages first and then save it and attach it that way. Or not say, you know what I mean? There's uh, options for doing that. But if you use okay. the. If you use the share sheet in notes and go directly to mail, it's going to put the text in the email. Mm -hmm. Um, Collaborative won't. So if you intend for it to be something that, you know, is real time collaborative, you can instead of saying send a copy, which, again, this is more advanced. We haven't taught the folks this yet. But um, instead of saying send a copy, you can say collaborate. And then if you don't want the other person to be able to edit it, you can turn off the editing privileges. You can email it that way. Now, that'll come as an attachment that they can open in their notes app. Um, what, so doesn't that's it send a link, Matt? Matt has left the meeting. What's that? Doesn't it send Matt a link, not an attachment, as an email when you collaborate? Well, like that? yeah, it's not. It's not an attachment. It'll send it as a link, right? But it'll open when they click the link. Then it will open in their notes app as if it were right. an attachment. Like yes, right. yeah. My question is, uh, I was in fact perplexed as to be when the the different the, the over different the, the differentiation better uh, between functions of the action button and actions of the long press button so sometimes and and that's a great question sometimes it doesn't matter sometimes it's interchangeable sometimes you want to check both and remember as voiceover users we also have the rotor which a lot of people tend to sort of default to that because they're not comfortable with long press or whatever. But sometimes the rotor does miss out on things that are available in the long press. But let me give you an example. So the folder actions button is what I think you're talking about. And that was because I was already in that folder. So let's just do a little comparison demo here. Let's go into a folder. All iCloud, note 2000, Betty. All right, here's a folder. I open that folder by double tapping it. So I'm inside the folder now. And there is collaborate, share, folder actions button. A folder actions button. Double tap to show. Let's see what's in it. View as, view as gallery, manage shared folder, show folder activity, add folder, but move this folder, but rename, select notes, sort by default, group by date, deep view attachments, convert to smart folder, dismiss context menu. Okay, button. now let's do the same thing by going out of the folder. Betty. Folder act check folders back button folder. and let's long Betty, press that folder and see if we get anything different. Betty shared with Betty Taylor. Let me long press notes, that button. Preview Betty pre- four notes shared with Betty Taylor. Share folder but manage shared folder. Show folder activity. Move rename delete dismiss context menu. Okay, so not quite as many options that time in the long press. And just to add even more uh, element of, of interesting here to this, let's let's check what's in the rotor for that folder. Delete folder, move folder, manage shared folder, rename folder, show folder activity, drag item, activate default. Okay, so I think the answer to your question is it depends on the situation, and I think it's worth checking both. Um, I think that you'll find most times the long press is the way to do those kinds of contextual things. But in certain specific apps, they may have a specific button, whether it's called actions, whether it's called more, whether 
you know, there's another name given to it. And in this particular instance, the the notes app, both in folders and in the individual notes that you create, does tend to have a button like that inside of it. And as you can see, there were more choices available in it. So I would always recommend doing both. You know, this is why we say try the long press, try the rotor, try exploring the screen to see what's there, because you never know what you might run across. I had a question about text selection. Um, I noticed you did it in the notes app. And I was wondering when it comes to text selection, could it also be done like if, say, for example, if someone were to send you an email or a text message, um, could those words be selected as well? Or would, would it give you that option to select those words in case you want to copy it and paste it somewhere oh. else? The general answer to that is yes. Now, I'm about to say text selection should be any, available anywhere there is text, including Safari. Yes. Okay. Now, now the app the app developer does have to properly code the app. Like, excuse me, I think I've seen cases where maybe I don't remember, like Facebook or something, one of those apps, you know, where people try to select text and they can't because it's not. It's selectable, funny that you period. mentioned Facebook because that is but, the number one where, where it's not available. I don't use yes, it very right. often, but that's the biggest but, complaint that I see on other. But lists. I don't think it's available to sighted users either, which is why it's not available to us. But yeah, typically um, text in Safari, text in email, even if it's not editable text, is still selectable text and you can copy it and so on. Now, a message that you receive in the messages app, that's a little bit different. So the text selection is available there in the edit field when you've typed text. But in a message that you've received, or I think you, well, yeah, I, that, or right, sent, right. I or, say. Yeah, or sent. Uh, you have to use the, let me see, you have to use the either the rotor or the long press and choose copy. And then that'll copy the, the text of that message, right? That's about the... Yes. Because I noticed um, if I came across a particular message that's in focus, if I did a three-finger quadruple tap, it would copy it. It will, okay, but, so, the, but the, the rotor action is still there. If you swipe up, it will right. copy. It will be one of the options. So here's the thing yeah. about the three-finger quadruple tap. That is a feature that is specific for voiceover, and it copies the last phrase that was spoken uh -huh. to the clipboard. Okay. Um, I, I have used it on occasion, and it is available, and you are correct. I do caution people to be very, very careful with it, and I'm not a fan of it unless it's an absolute, like the only way you can do it as a, as a last resort. And the reason being is because Sometimes, depending on what voiceover is saying, if, including like hints and different things like that, sometimes what you end up copying to the clipboard is either more or less than you actually really want. And if you're skilled and you can go back and, and realize that and edit it before it is a problem, that's fine. But if not, you know, you can end up with, you know, you try to paste, let's say, a tracking number or something like that, and then it's not working because there's an extra space or because it says um, double tap to edit or something. And now that was pasted also in your, you know, so you yeah. just need to be careful with that gesture, but yes, it does do what you're saying. In my Paste experience on using it, the only time that I really get extra text is when it's letting me know that there's a text field. So to read, Matt has a big head and he sat down on the couch and it'll say text field. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to go field. back and take the text field out. But more time yeah. than not, when you copy a link and it says link, it doesn't copy the word link. It doesn't copy the word button. It doesn't copy the word checkbox. So it's and gotten it doesn't smarter copy, with those. And it doesn't well, copy not, the voiceover com commands or, or, you know, any of the voiceover um, hints. It so doesn't it copy those. Not, could, um, so it, would, it won't copy elements like links buttons and edit okay right and and there are always uh, almost always other ways like you mentioned like an element like a link you know if you run across a link that you want to share with somebody 99 percent of the time if you long press that link there's going to be and it may seem a bit confusing at first because it kind of loads a preview of that link on the screen but if you just tap lower down on the screen you'll find like a copy link button and you know whatever okay. else and, yeah. and so there's um, almost always yeah. a way to do that yep i have a question back at the beginning you talked about syncing the um 
um, your I, you know, your devices in your iCloud and stuff. And there was a setting that you talked about turning off. And I think I kind of got confused about that. If I had to guess, because I wasn't here, I'm thinking he's probably turning, talking about the on my device setting. Because if you edit something in your notes or in iCloud Drive and you use the on my device setting, it doesn't sync across devices. But if you use the iCloud setting, then that one is the one that's going to sync across devices. Am I yeah, right or wrong, Matt? I, 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 hate to, I hate to have to give him credit, but yes, you are right. That is what I was talking about. Because in the settings for notes mm -hmm. and where else? There's another one. Is it, is it reminders or there's another one that has it an is. on it's, my... It's notes, it's reminders. Yeah, so Karen, what it is is that when it's it's going to say, like, whatever the name of the device is, like, on my iPhone or on my iPad. And in the case we talked about today, it's under settings and notes. And it's a separate account for notes that is only on that device, and therefore it does not sync. And I just have no use for that because I want everything to sync across devices. Um, you know, as and I unless said, you've I, turned it on manually, it's going to be um, turned off anyway. Yeah, I think it is Apple, off by default. That's it's off right. by default, yes. Both sync, um, putting it in the iCloud is on, and that one's on as well. I would turn that on off if you want your just, I mean, because it's going to, you're essentially going to get double copies, and especially if you do an I, iCloud backup or, uh, you know, you restore your device, say you forget to put one in one place and one in the other. But mm -hmm. because what happens is when you're saving something, if you have that option selected, it's going to ask you where you want to save it. And if you want it on all your devices and you accidentally say on my device, you're going to go over to your iPhone if you are on your iPad and that document or notes not going to be available to you. So if I turn right. that off, then it'll just automatically put it in the iCloud. Exactly. That's correct. That's correct. Okay. Now, that just, as a, just as a caveat, if you have either intentionally or unintentionally created notes in that on my iPhone account, if you try to turn it off right now, you're going to get a warning that says anything in this account is going to be removed from your device. Those, so those can be moved, right, Matt? Well, that's what I was just going to say. Yes. Yeah, exactly. If there's stuff in there that you really do wish to keep, move it first. And you can do that by long pressing on a particular note. And you can say move. And then you can put it in iCloud, and and then you won't have to worry about that. And you can also drag it, I believe. Okay. Yeah, I think you're right. Actually, you can use the rotor and drag. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I okay. So in the iCloud, I've got a list of the things that back up to the iCloud. Notes was turned on. Which, it which is, turned but if but if it if if that on my device account is selected when it backs those notes up it's not going to back it up to your iCloud it's only going to back it it's, o it's only going to be housed on your device as always thanks to everybody for joining us and we'll have class again on Wednesday Experience Lab take care everybody we'd like to thank you again for joining VoiceOver Voice in and out, out. 2023. Didn't get your question answered? Need additional training? Send us an email at support at ttjtech.biz or support at stirritup.com. And remember, stir is spelled with the U. That's S T U R I T U P.com. I'm Trainer Cliff. Thanks for joining us and see you next time. God bless. Thank you.